am here today with Dr. Matt Gellard. Doesn't need an introduction, but I'll let him kind of run through all of his accolades and crazy awesome things he's done in his career so far. Um, and then we're going to dive into to how to make yourself happy in your career. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Matt Geller, live in San Diego. We uh, operate Covalent Careers out of San Diego. We're a career development company for new healthcare professionals, and we help new healthcare professionals with education, mentorship, and job opportunities. And one of the brands that a lot of people know in the eye care space is New Grad Optometry. Career happiness, right? We hear that a lot. We want happiness in our life, but it's kind of that word that we don't really know what it means, right? It's not tangible. There's not something we can say, oh, I got that. It's a feeling. So, how do you know when you're happy, or better yet, when you're unhappy in a job? Well, when you leave your house in the morning and drive to work, what is the feeling that you get in your body, in your mind? How do you feel about that? Are you excited? Are you jamming the radio? Or when you're driving to work, are you just kind of miserable and uh, you know, gulping down as much coffee as possible so you can stay awake? And that's, that's your barometer right there to know if you're happy or not. And I think if you uh, need a reality check to see, look at that morning drive. What's that morning drive like for you? Same on the contrary for life happiness. When you're driving home from work, going back to your family and your home, how do you feel then? You should feel happy on both of those drives. That's a good point. Um, you know, I think a lot of times we confuse momentary happiness with, with true, you know, contentment within our career. How do you decipher between maybe you're having a little bit of a rough patch or you're growing or, you know, something's working itself out versus truly isn't a good fit for you? Well, I think you have to define really where you're going and ultimately where you want to be in your career and in your life. And probably the easiest way to do that is uh, kind of fast forward your life to, to when you're going to be 80, 90 years old. And uh, when you're at that point and you look back, you want to have as, as few regrets as possible. And I think a lot of people have many, many, many regrets. And so what you can do now as an exercise is portray yourself all the way, all the way down the line to that age and think about what's going to make you, what's going to enable you to have minimal regrets. And in that answer comes something around what your career and your passion should look like. I was listening to an interview recently with uh, Ariana Huffington, and she was asked the question about work-life balance and how much she disliked that, that phrasing. And I kind of agree with that in a sense. It's why do they have to be separate? What I do every day being up here is just as much work as it is life. There is no separation. It's silly to say, well, some people aren't that fortunate to have that ability to enjoy what they do so much. I think that's baloney. I think you've got to hunt for it and you've got to look for it. And the only way you can achieve that is by knowing where you're going. So I've got a more and more clear picture every day of where I'm going with my career and my life and what I want to do. And by having that and envisioning that, the decisions I make every day are so much easier. So much, so much easier. So when we do a lot of these career workshops and stuff, we're always talking about if you want to pick the right career pathway or get the next degree or certification or a uh, networking event or whatever it is, it all depends on really where you're trying to go in your career. And that makes decision making much easier. Yeah, you talk a lot about goals and, um, and the fact that you can't reach happiness or reach a goal without setting one first, right? So where, where does the new grad start? Where does the student start? How do they know when they don't really know what they enjoy yet? How do they know where to set those goals? I mean, you've made a lot of career moves already, um, but each one's been toward your final goal of, of working for yourself and, and building a company. And how do you get there? That's a really good question. I've actually have never truly distilled it down into different um, compartments. Uh, I think the most audacious goal setting happens at how much you want your net worth or your monthly income or your, excuse me, yearly income or where you want to be when you're at that retirement stage. What do you want your financial life to look like? And I think it's avoided because it's very taboo and there's a lot of conceived ideas around being wealthy or, or generating money. And so I think that's a place to start, not because it's the most important thing, but because it enables you to make other decisions a bit easier. Um, I'd say another big area is how you want your relationships to look like. What do you want those to look like? And there's different formats. And for me, I'm putting on an extroverted shell right now. At heart, I'm a true introvert. And those who know me know I keep a very small social circle with a very small amount of friends, but I have deep relationships with them and care about them a lot. And so I think there's a way you can define the family side and your friendship side is, is such a big part of everyone's life. So there's got to be goals set around that. There's got to be goals set around your setting, both geographically in the United States and the type of home or, 
or location you want to reside. Um, I think that's very important. And then I think another important thing to define is kind of um, what are you going to take from society and what are you going to give, specifically in the space of knowledge and learning, right? What do you want to help people with and how can you help them with that? But at the same time, what are you going to take in? What are you going to learn? What are you going to focus on to be the best you? Those are four pretty good areas you can start to outline and they're different for everyone, um, but they'll give you a bit of a shell to start with. Do you remember a specific moment that you knew you wanted to do something different in optometry? When I truly decided to stop seeing patients and go full time, it was pretty much a conversation that Brett, co-founder of Covalent Careers, and I had late nights kind of up figuring this whole game out. And ultimately we said, wow, look at what focus brings in your life. And we saw that when we focused on the company, the company did well. And so we said, we've got to make a sacrifice here and we've got to go full time and say goodbye to the money that comes from it and it will figure itself out, full faith, that kind of thing. So there was a decision there when I knew that any deviation of my focus would lead to lesser results. That's why anyone who sees me at the show going crazy, trying to make everything perfect, that's with full intention and understanding that I understand that that little bit of extra focus will make or break, not make or break, but lead to the type of result I want for the company, so. Yeah, I think you touched on a good point in not just career, but life. You know, if you're gonna, if you really want something, you have to be willing to do it 110%, right? You can't, yep. can't tread water and expect it to do like you want it to do. So, you know, that's a scary step to take, right? When you, you look in the mirror and say, I'm giving it all up, let's do this. Why do you think so many people, is it the fear of failure? Is it, um, they aren't really sure if that's what they want? What holds people back, in your opinion? I think there's probably a few things that hold people back. Um, number one being our conditioning and what we were told and what we heard. Uh, the things we heard around money, for one, is a huge piece of our psychology and our uh, conservative nature to not take risk. Any emotion you have can easily be reframed into something else. Seriously, anything. And so, you know, if I feel fear, I may not feel it the way fear is traditionally felt, but reframing it into motivation or reframing it into um, something else to make it more useful for me towards that end goal.